Hi, I'm Mrs. D. Math. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to cover constant rate of change in seventh grade math. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started with an example, let's go ahead and talk about what the rate of change is. And the rate of change is the ratio or comparison of how one amount changes in relation to another. So we did go over the word ratio in the last video, but it is just a comparison of two things. And usually this is written as a fraction. When this change is constant, the amounts have a linear relationship. And you can see the base word in linear is line. So this means that they form a straight line on a graph. This is also called a proportional relationship, which is represented by the equation y equals kx. So k is our constant rate of change or proportionality between x and y. So x and y are your two amounts that we were talking about as a ratio when we we're describing a graph. So in order to find k, you want to divide y by x, and you're gonna get those amounts from each of your ordered pairs. So once you divide y by x and you get k, then you wanna plug in k back into your equation y equals kx that we mentioned right up here. So this is going to all tie into the constant rate of change. So let's go ahead with some examples. So for this first example, Jason is training for a race. The table shows the number of miles he ran y over the number of hours. So this has already been labeled. If it's not labeled, usually x is gonna be the first column and y is gonna be the second column. If it's written horizontally, X is usually on top and Y is on the bottom. And we also have had videos over independent and dependent variables. Y is always dependent on X. And so if time is involved, usually time is going to be your X. And if distance is involved, usually distance is going to be your Y because the amount of distance depends on the amount of time. So let's go ahead with this table for Jason. And we wanna answer a few questions. So first we wanna answer, what is the constant rate of change? So this constant rate of change is where we would like to do K equals Y divided by X. And in this situation, we have several ordered pairs and you can just pick any of them. If you are concerned that it's going to be constant or not, we can try a couple of them. So if I go in here and I wanna test out um, Let's go ahead and test this one out because it does have whole numbers. So if I test out y, which is 12, divided by 2, which is my x, then my k is going to end up equaling 6 because 12 divided by 2 is 6. I can also try it out with maybe this last one down here because it's also going to be whole numbers. And that's usually easier to work with. So in this case, I'm going to do 18 for my y divided by 3 is my x. And again, I get six. So it looks like six is going to be the constant rate of change or my K. So now that we have solved for K, what is Jason's speed? Well, this is telling me Jason's speed is six miles per hour. So this is gonna be our unit rate. If you missed the video that we covered last over unit rate, you can find that linked below. But this is gonna be your six miles per hour. And that means the relationship between hours and miles is going to be back into our original equation, y equals 6x. So once we solve for k, we're going to plug that back into our equation, y equals kx, and now it's y equals 6x. Now, this helps us knowing that if he's running at a constant rate of 6 miles per hour, then we can figure out how far he's gone no matter how many hours have passed. So let's look at another problem, and this one is about Coach Jones, and they are buying new jerseys for the volleyball team. The table shows the number of jerseys purchased and the cost. We wanna know, does this represent a proportional relationship? So is this actually a constant rate of change? So I can still just use my original equation, K equals Y divided by X, and I can really pick any of these numbers to plug in and test. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the first one and I'm gonna do 125 divided by 10. And that's gonna give me $12.50 per jersey. Now I know this is a cost, so my answer is gonna be in dollars. 
So $12.50 or $12.5 means $12.50 per jersey. Now they wanna know if this is a proportional relationship. So now we know that this first one is $12.50 per jersey. Okay, then we wanna find out what is our unit rate or cost per jersey for the second option. So let's go ahead and plug that into our equation and solve for the second one. So the second one is gonna be 180 divided by 15. Notice I'm gonna put my Y on top and my X on the bottom. And when I divide this, I end up with 12. So that means the second jersey option is $12 per jersey. So I can already see that this is not a constant rate of change. But I am gonna go ahead and check the next one because sometimes I make a mistake. So let's go ahead and check the $275 for 25 jerseys. So that would be how many quarters we have in $2.75. That would give me 11 quarters. So that means that the third option is $11 per jersey. So I can see already that this does not represent a proportional relationship because it is not gonna end up going in a straight line. It's not gonna be linear. My rate of change or my K is not consistent, okay? But I can see that the more jerseys I buy, the cheaper the price per jersey. So this is a good way to weigh out your options as to what is gonna be the better buy. So let's go ahead with the third example. Sarah bought apples at $1.60 per pound and used the constant rate of proportionality to complete the table and write the equation. So I can see here that each apple cost $1.60 per pound. And so this is the situation where you go up to the register and you have to weigh whatever you're buying and it's gonna charge you $1.60 per pound, which means we bought two pounds. We want to multiply that times $1.60. And two times $1.60 is gonna equal $3.20. And that means I'm gonna multiply each one of these times $1.60. So three pounds is gonna cost me $4.80. Five pounds is gonna cost $9, and seven pounds is gonna cost $11.20. So I can see here that my X amounts are not increasing consistently, which means my Y amounts are not either. So I can tell here, based on $1.60 per pound, that every time I buy another pound, I'm gonna add $1.60, or I can multiply the amount of pounds I'm buying times $1.60, which means my equation is going to be, instead of y equals kx, I know my k is $1.60 because that is my constant rate of change. So my final equation is y equals $1.60 or 1.6x. So you don't need the zero in your equation, you could write it either way, but it is in money, so we're gonna go ahead and keep it there. So y equals the $1.60x. So this $1.60 per pound is always gonna indicate your K or your constant of proportionality. So we have three ways we can use this. Uh, the first way we went with finding K by using our X and our Y values. And then the second time we decided if it was constant or not by plugging in the numbers. And then for the third one, we actually used our K to find the missing costs of each amount of pounds. So as you can see, this is very useful and it is something that you will continue to learn about in eighth grade math and algebra. I'm Mrs. D Math and this has been Constant Rate of Change in Seventh Grade Math. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you have a great day. Bye.